Our conservation plan for the Wright State Woods is to turn the Rockfield Alumni Center, previously known as the President's House, into a conservation education center and to facilitate use of the woods. Our goals are to create classrooms for student, campus, and community use. Our conservation center would be ran with the assistance of student volunteers. These students can receive volunteer hours through student involvement and leadership. The woods are currently used by two departments, biology and art, and are used for many research projects. They are also used by ROTC and faculty, but are hardly used by students. Having a conservation center in the woods could increase awareness and facilitate use of the woods, and more use of the woods would lead to better protection. There are many benefits of having a conservation center. It could increase the use of the woods by the community and campus, which could get more students interested in joining Wright State Campus. Also, the more students who use the woods could lead to more students wanting to protect it. Finding directly applicable research on benefits of conservation centers is tough. However, arguments exist to show that education centers built in botanical gardens not only increase visitor satisfaction and enjoyment, but also increase the likelihood of those visitors recommending the centers and their subject matter to their friends. It has been found that the theme of the center is often the most important factor in the identity and the formation of the visitors' opinions. As is done with existing examples of conservation centers, such as the one at the, no the nearby Glen Helen Reserve, we feel it is important to focus on thematic devices specific to our woods, such as history and extant species. Although these findings are not specific to conservation centers, we feel them to be an allegory that can be applied in a broader scope. Our group understands that creating a useful and cohesive conservation center is a large undertaking. We've concluded that in order to effectively reinvigorate the Rockefeller building, we must drum up both interest and funds. So we've come up with a few marketing strategies that should help put the center on track financially while propelling it into the public eye. The first component of our plan would be to create a logo for the center. Our eye-catching, unforgettable logo will identify the center and help communicate the building's purpose. It will also be monetized on merchandise available for sale in a small gift shop within the center. The second piece of our marketing plan addresses the need for funding, both funding the initial remodel of the building as well as for the continued financial support for the center. A committee of volunteers will solicit and collect donations. A large group to begin with, this committee would shrink after the opening of the center and continue to be an active force in acquiring funding. We'd also like to partner with local restaurants to host fundraising events. During these occasions, a percentage of food sales during the event would go to the center. This type of fundraiser is common, easy to facilitate, and could help consistently fund the Conservation Center and its programs. Ultimately, this would all be communicated via a well-structured advertising campaign focused on introducing the facility and its limitless potential for conservation education. We would like to utilize Wright State's social media, flyers tacked to hallway bulletin boards, the Nutter Center billboard, local press releases, and on-campus sandwich boards to communicate the details of the Conservation Center to the public. Built into the advertising campaign would be information concerning volunteer opportunities available to students and campus organizations. Assistance with logistics would come from the Student Involvement and Leadership Division of Student Affairs, while training of volunteers would be conducted by the center's faculty director. A paid position, the director should be committed to conservation of the Wright State Woods and would be instrumental in organizing and running the center. We'd also seek involvement from community groups, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts come to mind, who may be interested in reserving space for events, meetings, or educational endeavors. Some potential volunteer opportunities provided by the center include staffing a welcome desk where visitors in the lobby can check out trail guides, observe research projects and art featuring the Wright State Woods, as well as purchase Conservation Center merchandise, nature books, and supplies for their nature treks. This example of a shop, similar to what we had in mind, comes from the Puffman Center. We'd also need volunteers to organize classroom spaces for groups and assist the faculty director during trail walks and events. 
Once enough funding has been secured and interest in the conservation center is established, the process of renovating the building will begin. To begin conversion of the Alumni Center into an education center, we need to first talk to university officials to gain permission and sign any necessary paperwork, as we all know how much documentation goes into new projects. Once that is done, the next step involves construction. There is damage to the building that would need to be fixed first. Then the space can be converted to have exhibits, classrooms, and a gift shop. This can all be paid for using the funds from the generous donors and fundraisers. After construction is finished, we can hold a grand opening ceremony, which will help with the marketing of the building and Rice State University. At the ceremony, we will introduce the faculty who helped with the process and will be working out of the center. We will thank all the donors for their contributions and also stress the benefits of a conservation center and the importance of land conservation. Once the center is up and running, its main feature will be an information hub. It will provide information about the history of Rice State and the Rice State Woods. There can be exhibits detailing the native species and invasive species and how to identify them. It will have signs that describe the current conservation strategies being used. Another important feature that the center will have is meeting spaces designed for organizations focused on the work in the woods. Classroom spaces will be available for classes that do projects there. University officials and other professionals can also use the space for their own meetings which will provide more attention to the center and the woods. The center can also be used for the basis of any researchers who use the woods for their research. Students who are helping on that research can also utilize the center. Once research is completed, the center can also showcase the research projects. As already mentioned, the outdoor recreation program uses the woods at least once a month for hiking trips. With the new center, the outdoor recreation program can use the center as an office space where they will be more likely to utilize the woods more often. Another major aspect that comes with the center is the creation of more sidewalks. The trails should be more accessible to everyone, which means that they should be paved at least to some of the hot spots into the center. For example, there are no sidewalks along Circle Road, which isn't inclusive to students with physical disabilities. The question still remains, why is a building that is set empty for most of the last decade worth saving, especially when university officials agree the building is a lost cause? We maintain that it is always better to reuse and repurpose resources when possible. We feel that this is a core tenet of conservation. In addition, this property has specific significance to our school and state. The Rockefeller House, built in 1969, served as the home of the first five presidential families of the university. Built by state-renowned architect E.A. Glendening, the house has collected appraise over the years, including publications in journals such as the Ohio History Connection and Cincinnati Architecture. The house has also been listed by the Ohio Historical Society as a property of note. With its central location deep in the Wright State Woods and close to both the stands of old and new growth, it would serve as a near-perfect center for our uses. Conservation is a tree with many branches, and we know that there's no real right answer to the question of preserving our natural spaces. However, we feel that the idea of not in my backyard is a true driving force in today's world. A person is much more likely to care about, and therefore care for, a space they use. To instill a belonging in the woods, to facilitate the use of services and the natural spaces within, will help people care again. A conservation education center isn't the only answer and is just the first step on a highway with no real off-ramps. Conservation is and always will be an ongoing and ever-changing endeavor. This center can help serve as a beacon to orient and direct further preservation efforts. In the words of an immortal pillar of conservation, Steve Irwin, if I can teach people about wildlife, they will be touched. Humans want to save the things they love.